So you told me that you should find beauty within yourself. And then the example that you gave was your busted friend with crooked teeth. Okay, like he probably looked like sloth from the Goonies. And you told me that this guy, you thought his teeth look attractive. And you were telling him that you thought his teeth look attractive, which was irrelevant. Given the fact that his teeth are busted. And he has the, everybody tell him that it was busted. But you told him that it was looking good. And then when you told him that he looked good, you should, then you told him that he needs to find beauty within. What are you talking about? Why would you even give the example of you saying that you like his teeth if you were just gonna tell him ultimately that he needs to find beauty within? What does that even mean? Fat selfies are a political act of resistance and visibility. Do not let your intentional act of resistance become de-radicalized by the language of bravery and personal self-esteem. Everybody nowadays has to be an activist for something. And what I've come to realize is that we have really stretched the limits of what we classify as activism, right? Like, you know, at one point when women couldn't vote or back when, you know, black dudes had to count Skittles or M&Ms in a jar to actually vote for the candidate they want to vote for. And people were standing up and they were having political activism and things such and so forth. That is activism. You know, I'm talking about people marching the streets, people trying to get major changes done systemically for these giant major issues in society. I get that. That makes a lot of sense. But for a fat woman that looks like she's off the set of like, she's like an extra on the set of like the Hunger Games and she's wearing like a, I don't know, like a, an inflated version of like a bubble suit or something like that. It to me doesn't seem like it's activism. Taking selfies shouldn't be considered to be activism because your gut is out. That doesn't even make any sense. So like, <laughs> is that like me going like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take a picture with my dick hanging out because that's like political activism against any dude that has a smaller penis than me? How does that even make sense? Like, what are we talking about right now? Why are we going so far to try to justify our fat bodies? Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, who are you even activizing against? Like, the, the gravity itself? Like, are you, like, flipping off pictures of, like, Newton? Like, Isaac Newton? Like, fuck you, I can't believe that you instated gravity into the universe. Without, if you weren't here, I would have just been floating all day, and then gravity just would never apply to me. Because that's, like, the only thing I feel like that's oppressing you. Because, like, all the major issues that I see fat people facing today are not really issues that anybody can actually do anything about with the exception of yourself. Because if you're complaining about things like, I need two seats on an airplane, or I can't walk for long periods of time without needing to take a break for some breaths, or stairs are literally inconvenient for me, I don't know what to tell you. It's literally all about you. All the privileges that you think that thin people have are literally not privileges. They're just things that normal people have access to that you have you have taken and you've had before, but you have weighed yourself out of. And now, granted, if you've always been fat for your entire life, you know, uh, that's terrible, obviously. But that doesn't mean that those privileges are not afforded to you. You're just so fat, they just don't apply anymore. So you can't blame. That'd be like, that'd be like a truck, right? Like a truck was, your, a, truck, a truck driver was driving and the road, there's like a bridge and it says trucks with this amount of load cannot go down this road. And then like truckers all across the country have to stop and like come over to this one spot with like picket fences and going, this is ridiculous. Trucks should be able to get underneath this bridge. Make this bridge bigger. Like, what are you talking about? Like you can't, you can't just expect society in and of itself just to change fundamentally because you have some kind of I don't know, inadequacies in certain areas. And to sit there and think that taking a picture is going to do anything besides think that people are going to make fun of you for it because you're claiming, <laughs> because you're claiming that it's a political statement. It's your, it's your gut hanging out. It's not a political statement. It's diabetes. Anyway. When fat people post images of themselves online, we are using our bodies. Man, dude, this is crazy. I lied about that thing earlier. This might, this, this outfit kind of looks actually like you guys ever watch Aquaman? I think it was like 2018's Aquaman. Terrible movie, by the way. I don't care what anybody says. J Jason Momoa is a mid-actor. I'm not afraid to say it. Very terrible movie. It was like below average. Like most movies that Hollywood makes is like their average movies. Aquaman was not an average movie. It was a below average movie. You might have gotten a little bit of points because Willem Dafoe was in it, but they were, he was underutilized. Willem Dafoe was like one of our one of the best actors, and they, they still made him suck in the movie. But anyway... This looks like, yeah, you're an extra off the set of Aquaman. And if you ever watch the movie, then you know how bad the sets were. Anyway, let's... When fat people post images of themselves online, we are using our bodies. The very thing we are marginalized for. How do you think you're marginalized for your body? Like, I'm sorry that stairs exist. I'm sorry that you guys don't defy gravity. Like, it's not our fault that you have joint problems. It's your fault. You have to, <laughs> you have to at least take some accountability. How did you get to the size that you did? Can I look at your diet throughout the day? Can I look at those Uber receipts? 
Like, what do you when you say, "Hey, we need representation. Our bodies are being oppressed daily." What is oppressing you exactly? The gravity itself? Like, come please, please define what you mean by that. As intentional tools, we are disallowing our erasure. And Who is erasing you? I feel like most people don't even care that you guys are fat. Like, there are very, there's a very slim portion of society that thinks that being fat is such a major problem that it needs to be, like, eradicated. And I would go as far as to say it's, like, less than 1% of the population. Because most people don't really care. Like most people are doing their own thing. Most people are living their own lives and you're just kind of like, you know, drifting through it day to day. So to sit there and think that like, you really think that you're so special that people are like sitting down all day, you know, biding their time going like one day, one day those fat people will pay for it. They'll pay for all their traumas, eating those double chocolate chip cookies all day and drinking the grease at the bottom of the stove. Like nobody's doing that, nobody, okay? And to think that they are is weird. I don't know why you think like that. We are opening ourselves up to- Hold up now, you gotta open yourself up. I don't know about that. You might wanna close yourself down a little bit, wear a little bit more clothes. We are disallowing our erasure and we are opening ourselves up to potential harm in order to claim visibility. What, what is the harm? Is it, is the harm you posting a video online and having people look at that video and go, Oh my God, what is this woman talking about? What are the words that she's espousing from her mouth? None of them make any sense at all because that's not actually what harm is. If somebody says something mean to you on the internet because you posted a video on the internet, that's not exactly what I would consider to be harm. I understand that nowadays definitions kind of are pretty loosely, you know, they're all over the place. Like, for a good example, what you're doing right now, in the words of activism, taking pictures on Instagram and showing off your stomach is somehow activision. You know, sorry, activision. Activism. Like, I don't know, maybe you might convince a few people that your belly button is nice and lubricated. I don't even know. Like, what are you even taking pictures of? Can we? I would love to even know what she means by taking, like, fat selfies. What is that? What is a fat selfie, by the way? Most of the time when I see fat people taking selfies, they're doing this. They're doing that because they know that the only features that they have that are really attractive would be the jawline, but they have lack of jawline because their faces are permanently inflated by the amount of fat that they have on their body. So in order to counter that, they have to like, you know, tilt their head or whatever like that. I don't really see fat people taking pictures of their stomachs. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, that seems weird, man. That's some fetish. That's some fetish content right there. If you see, if you go on somebody's Instagram or whoever and you look through their catalog of pictures and you just see pictures on hordes of pictures of guts of stomachs and i don't know like what are you even doing with those pictures of your i guess it wouldn't even be a selfie technically right don't you have to have your face in the picture what are you like taking it down low and having your gut like apex to the side of your face you know what i'm talking about i remember one time this girl had told me that she received a, a dick pic like that where a guy had sent her a dick pic and he was like taking it like this so like he took the camera and he put it like between his legs and he had an erection obviously and then he had his head come out from the side of the a penis so he was like this like, that's what he did, apparently. I didn't see the picture because I don't look at dick pics recreationally. I look at my own dick pics. I have a few of them on my – on my uh, just because sometimes you might need one on an off chance because, like, here's the thing. For women, when you guys take vagina pictures, um, most dudes don't even know what it is. Most of the time, if you go, uh, hey, you want to see a picture of my vagina, most guys are going to be like, yes, I do. You know what? Never mind because I it's over. I just – I just busted all down my leg off the thought process of you even sending one and you could just send a picture of like your armpit or you could just send like a picture of the back of your ankle or something like that or even like maybe a toaster oven. I feel like most guys wouldn't even know the difference. So things like that, most dudes are not really, they don't really care about that stuff. So off of that, it doesn't matter, right? But for dudes, it's like, oh, send me a dick pic. It's like, damn, dude. Like, I don't, like, what are you, I'm at the grocery store. Like, what am I gonna, I'm not gonna just slap my shit around at the fucking grocery store. I got one on hand, right? That's what I'm gonna do. So I gotta send you one. And also, um, depending on the circumstance and where you're at, it's not always gonna be the best quality of picture. Like, I'm not fully meted up at this particular moment in time. And any dude will tell you this, depending on the time frame and how you feel on that time frame, it's not gonna be the most luxurious picture. It could be a little bit, it could be an inch or less um of inability uh you know what i'm saying you need some uh, you need a little bit of time to you know i don't know go in there slap it up a little bit i don't know dude whatever man i don't even know what we're talking about we aren't brave we're fucking radical which is not a good thing i i, I do agree that these people are radical and then the fact that this woman's making like these hand movements and these hand gestures to try to like i don't know like this is an art piece or something like that like don't lie to me i know you bought those sparkly lace things back there from the dollar tree i have the same ones <laughs> i know i have them hanging up too but 
I don't think it's a good thing to be radical because usually when I hear somebody say I'm radical, I hear I am not listening to anybody on the other side because I know I'm right regardless of what you say. Therefore, you are wrong. And you guys consistently put yourself in vacuum chambers to only hear everybody else just confirm your biases over and over and over again. Like, I'm going to let you know right now. If you're in an environment where everybody's just continuously yes-queening you and never actually pushing back, pushing back against any of your ideas, that's not a good thing, okay? That just means that you're... You're not actually learning from anything. You're just literally just repeating the same shit over and over and over again. But you know what? Yeah, brag about your your gut pictures and uh, be claim that you're radicalized. Demanding to be seen as whole and not. Well, we don't have a choice to see you as whole. I mean, that's like. Dave, we're fucking radical. Demanding to be seen as whole and not headless B-roll on the nightly news. What does that even mean? What are you talking about? Who even watches the news anymore? What? We are using our incredible bodies to I think incredible is kind of stretching the term. You Man, you real deal have to come up with better words. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Because sometimes I look at things and I go, wow, that's incredible. Because I look at like maybe a really nice car or I look at like an athlete that ran a very large distance. Like, wow, this is incredible. And then you go, my body's incredible. And I look at that and then I look at what I just described as uh, incredible and I go, hold up. Hold on now. I think something's awry. I think something is missing somewhere because I don't think – somebody's lying. Somebody's lying, and I've never heard somebody refer to their overweight, obese body as incredible. I've never heard of that. Maybe in a different way, but not like that. It's like somebody saying beautiful. Like if somebody was like, wow, you, you know, you're so beautiful, and then they looked at a picture of like, a, I don't know, a culmination of Danny DeVito, and uh, I don't even know. Who's that guy? Danny DeVito. In a very unattractive man. I don't know. Whoever else. Right? It doesn't matter. They fusion danced. Um, Steve Buscemi. They fusion danced. And they go, look how beautiful this is. And I'd go, hold up now. I'm not saying Steve Buscemi and Danny DeVito are, aren't beautiful. But if we're looking at this beautiful individual compared to this, like something's kind of, you know, we all have different definitions on how we describe things as beautiful. Sure. But sometimes I feel like these people just kind of go far in their ways of describing things. Bring the fucking fight. What are you gonna fight exactly, dude? You guys are your bodies are so inefficient you can't even walk upstairs. I, I think probably actually, if you guys were serious about actually trying to make systemic change in society, I think you guys could probably have a good two hours of doing that, and then you have to go home and probably take a nap and then microwave your 14 hot pockets. Like what do you there's no way you guys are practically speaking? You guys don't have the stamina to withstand any type of actual activism. And if you count I mean, it makes sense. I mean, if you're taking pictures on Instagram of your, your gut hanging out and claiming that to be activism, then I get it. Like, that, you know what? You might have that, actually. Because, like, you obviously can't do it IRL, so you have to do it on the internet. You're not fat, you're beautiful. Is just, like, I feel like that is the slogan for fat phobia and fat bias. I really do. I, I think most of the time when these people say you're not fat, you're beautiful, because they think... They think they, that it can be synonymous. Fat and beautiful are the same term, which is it, – it depends. It depends. It depends on the person, I would I would actually say. Some fat people – and I use the term fat very loosely here in the sense of like if you're 5, 10, 20, 30 pounds over, I'll give you that. You might be beautiful. You might have a lot of curves. You might have a lot of definitions. You might be – if you're a man, a lot of guys that are like bulky are attractive, right? But once you start getting in the twos – and then you hit the threes, and then you tell me that you're beautiful. What are you talking about? Where is the beauty exactly of looking at somebody that is pre-diabetic, high blood pressure, can barely walk upstairs? A lot of the beauty standards that we have associated today are literally just things that are health, health identifiers, right? You understand? Like, So when I hear people say, I'm beautiful while fat, I'm looking at you and I'm going, ah, you just ate 4,000 calories and I'm looking at spaghetti sauce all over your armpits right now. I don't even know why you got it there. What do you mean you're beautiful? Can we just talk about that for a second? That's weird to me. I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I think most of the time, not the case. Like if you're obese, it's probably not the case that you're beautiful and that's okay because you can still become beautiful. You might be beautiful to someone, but then in that particular case and scenario, that's not even the, the terminology at which you were using that word. Because if you're saying you're objectively beautiful, that would mean that most people look upon you and go, you're beautiful, which is not the case. Most people are not going to do that. I really fucking do. Like, let's break it down. You're not fat. You're beautiful. Literally two completely separate things, right? True, 100%. Right? I can be fat and beautiful. You can be, but that would also... 
You can be. It just, it, maybe not for you. I am fat and beautiful. Well, I mean, maybe you leave it up to other people. It's very easy for somebody to sit there and tell you that they're beautiful. Like, I could say that all day. You know what I'm saying? I could say that all day. Like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm so beautiful. I'm so majestic. Like, when I walk outside, I have a harem of women praising me, telling me that I'm the most beautiful organism upon the planet. I am divinity personified. Look upon me with, with grace. You know, I don't know, like slay goats in my name to yield better crop. Like, what are you talking? Like, it's very easy for somebody to tell you how they are. It's very easy. But then in actuality, and I know you know what I'm talking about. Like, if you ever talk to somebody and they say, dude, I'm funny, I'm charismatic. I've done this a lot when it comes to women. Like, I have so much personality. I'm so crazy. I'm like, I'm, I'm such a great person. And then you talk to them and you get to know them and you're like, dude, you're fucking awful. You're so awful. You're so bad. And that's okay. Because everybody in their own eyes looks at themselves as beautiful. Nobody looks at themselves as average. And that's okay. Because to you, you're not average. But to other people outside looking in, I think it's better for other people to look at you and get a broad understanding of how other people see you. And then look at that before you look at how you view yourself. Because it's very easy for everybody to view themselves. Everybody thinks they have a great personality. Everybody thinks they're hot. Everybody thinks they have great features about themselves, sure, but I think it might be more beneficial to see what other people think and then judge based off of those things, if that makes any sense. Well, thank you very much. The fact that people think it's a compliment, it just shows you that they obviously don't think fat equals beauty. Yeah, no shit. Nobody thinks that, dude. Majority of people don't think that. I don't know why these people have a hard time understanding that the majority of people, like that means more than 51%, like 51% and up, do not think that fat people are beautiful. You might find a few people, sure, but like most people not. And the higher up weight you go, yeah. Um, and the two can't exist in the same realm, um, let alone the same sentence. And I would just like to welcome anybody who may think that or has made that comment in the past just to maybe rethink and shift how you think about that. Because what you're really saying is that you're not able to be beautiful when you're fat. Can you tell us why you think that instead of just telling people to not think that? I, I don't know why these people can pull out a video like that and say, listen, guys, I hear what you're saying. You're saying that fat people cannot be beautiful, but I think you guys shouldn't think that. Anyway, bye. What do you... That's not going to help anybody. You're not convincing anybody. There's no buying point. That'd be like going to a car dealership and going you know, uh, I'm interested. I'm interested in this car. I'm interested in finding out why this car is so good and luxurious and all this other stuff. And the sales guy goes, oh yeah, yeah, I can help you. I can help you with that real deal. I think that, yeah, let me, let me break it down for you. So this car is good. It's a good car. So you want to sign the papers right now? We could probably go right now. I can get this deal signed up for you right now. And then you go, what? Well, okay. Well, like, I mean, I get that you think it looks good, but like, well, what are some good, you know, what are the features about the car? Ah, uh, I mean, my bad, I forgot. So, the automobile within question is a car. Let's go, let's go sign you up. Let's go right now, let's go sign you up. That's what you're basically doing. Tell me why you think that fat people can be viewed as beautiful. Why those two are synonymous. Please, enlighten us. Don't just sit there and go, well, you guys think that you're just bad people because you don't, that, you don't think that fat people can be beautiful. I, well, I, yeah. I know, but you didn't say anything. You didn't help me understand in any way. Really saying is that you're not able to be beautiful when you're fat. It's come to my okay. attention so that- that's the end of the video. Beautiful. That people think that thin privilege is not a real thing. Well, let me give you an example and explain how it is a real thing. Anytime I see Marissa Matthews in a video, dude, I'm, you know what I really hate about TikTok too? Is that TikTok does this thing where you can stitch people, where you could put your thing next to them. And sometimes it could be cool if you're responding to them or something like that. Or maybe you're doing like a duet of like cool musicals and things like that. I don't know. But I do not like it when people don't do anything in the video. Like if you're sitting here and you're making a TikTok and somebody, you're just reposting somebody else's shit and you're just going like this. Like, what is that? You're not contributing anything to the video. You're just making weird faces while looking at the video. Just repost the fucking video, bro. I don't want to watch your fat face at the bottom of the fucking video pointing up at it and then laughing when I know you're not actually laughing because you probably watched this video five times before this. So the joke is no longer, like, it's no longer nuanced to you. You just heard it five five separate times. And you probably recorded this video, like, eight other times, right? It's like taking it's like taking a dick pic. The first one is never good enough. You gotta take, like, five more. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that. So... 
I don't like it. I don't like it. And I'm pretty sure Marissa Matthews, um, in general, <laughs> I, I hope that she contributes something to this video, but it don't look, it don't look so because it looks like she's eating some kind of grilled cheese on like the Hogwarts train. I can post a video of myself eating dessert, waffles covered in peanut butter and blueberries and all of my favorite foods. And people say, oh, thank you so much. This is so helpful. I mean, thank you so much. How are you going to buy? So a skinny girl can just post a video of her eating those assorted foods. And then somebody in the comment section is going to go, thank you. Thank you for what? What are you like? Oh, yeah, thanks. I just beat off real quick to you eating that blueberry covered in peanut butter. Thanks. What do you mean? Thanks. That's such a weird response. That's such a weird response. Berries and all my favorite foods. And people say, oh, thank you so much. This is so helpful. Why is it helpful? I'm Maybe I'm just not. Maybe, I'm sorry, dude. Like, if a thin person was doing that and somebody said, thank you, this is so helpful. I just, I'm probably, if I did that and somebody said that, I'm thinking that person probably just beat off real quick watching me eat, right? Which I don't even know if I would be attractive while I eat because I probably, I, well, I'm a pretty clean eater. I close my mouth and stuff like that. I don't know, whatever. And then some of my friends and colleagues that reside in larger bodies could put up the exact same videos and their comment section will say, you shouldn't be eating that. You don't deserve to eat that. But you know, the reason why a lot of those people would say that particular type of thing is because they're looking at it through the realm of you being thin and that person being fat or obese. You do understand that there's a difference between you and that other person. You do understand that, right? By definition, being obese is going to 100% and, and identify you as an unhealthy person. And how did, I wonder how an obese person got to be unhealthy to begin with. Huh. I, I, I really wonder how an obese person got unhealthy. I wonder. How did they get to the obese standard? Could it be that they ate food in a high quantity to make their bodies that particular way? Why would you think that somebody's looking at an obese person and think, hmm, this obese person obviously has a problem with food consumption and I'm going to have an issue with that compared to you where you're a thinner person and you look like somebody that doesn't have an issue with food consumption. I get it. We're on the outside looking in. Like you don't understand what the inside looks like. I understand. You could be, you could have an illness. You could actually have a, an ED or some kind of like condition or things such, such and so forth. I understand that. I do. I really do. But that's dumb because most people are not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Most people are not going to read your Wikipedia page to see if you have some kind of like ED or some kind of condition or something like that. But most people are most definitely going to look at you compared to another person and go, huh, I, using my deductive abilities, looking at an obese person compared to a non-obese person, I deduce that the obese person is far more unhealthy. That's the reason, okay? In the same way that if you looked at like a heroin addict and you looked at this guy every single day, this dude is Ill injecting himself with heroin. I don't know how you, uh, maybe you eat it. I don't know what you do with heroin. You're doing that. And then somebody that does heroin once, are you going to have more of a problem with somebody that's doing it consistently compared to somebody that does it once? Well, maybe that's a bad analogy. I wouldn't want anybody doing heroin. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's obviously different. Somebody that's been doing it for years and years and years and years obviously has a bigger problem compared to the guy that does it once. Maybe if you don't eat that, you'll lose some weight. Has it ever occurred to you that somebody... It's also really crazy seeing that Marissa Matthews literally just stitched this video just to sit there and eat this grilled cheese sandwich. Like, uh... Okay, Marissa, you really, you know, you're really proving good points here. ...to eat that. Maybe if you don't eat that, you'll lose some weight. Has it ever occurred to you that somebody in a smaller body can eat those foods and they don't randomly just turn into somebody in a larger body? They don't randomly, but it comes with consistency, which is the problem to begin with. Like, if you're consistently eating high-calorie, high-calorie, dense foods that are going to make you obese, then there you go. That's the problem. I know. That's what we're saying. You're not saying you're going to randomly turn into it. It's all about consistency. So you understand. So maybe, just maybe, people reside in larger bodies because they simply just fucking do. This person right here, by the way, I believe is some kind of like food advocate or something like that or a uh, professional food nutritionist, I believe, or something like that. And sometimes I hear this person talk and I think, how, the, how on God's green earth did you get this type of certification? And just, and then also have work under the assumption that fat people are just fat because they're fat. That's interesting. That is a very interesting way of looking at things, isn't it? Especially somebody that is supposed to have the information um, that would, you know, authenticate the degree or whatever else, how they got this. I just don't, I cannot believe it sometimes when I hear these people talk. Because I'm, I'm just thinking like, am I the one that's dumb here? Because there's no way that a, per a person that's getting paid professionally, that has clients, 
is telling me that fat people are just fat because they're fat. There's no lead up. There's no like <laughs> one plus one equals two. There's no domino effect. None of that, right? They're just fat. Interesting. That is a very interesting statement given the fact that you're literally a nutritionist. How did you get there? Huh? Ah, that's real interesting. This is like a professional grifter. A professional grifter, dude. Somebody that's going to say whatever they need to say in order to get by. And obviously, it's like having a black guy. It's like having a black guy friend. And you go, hey, bro, can I say the N-word? And the guy goes, yeah, dog, you can say the N-word and stuff like that. They give you the pass. So it's like, it's a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Or like a black Trump supporter. And then they go, Trump is racist. Trump is racist. And you go, well, how can he be racist when we have Jamal here? And Jamal is black. And then he comes over and he goes, yeah, I'm black, I'm black, and I love Trump and stuff. That's what it is. That's what it's like. You just have a thin person that's advocating. Or, oh, man, one of the greatest examples, ready? Just pearly things, okay? You know who this is, just pearly things? Saying all the same red pill stuff that all the other red pillars say, but because she's a woman, it it gives it more validity because why would a woman be talking shit about a woman if it wasn't true? Huh? You know what I'm saying? It's like that. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. You got somebody on this side. They're just grifters. You're just saying shit because you know it's going to get you famous or it's going to give you more views or it's going to say. It takes a bigger person to actually say the truth rather than just say whatever you think is going to get you the most publicity. So instead of leaving comments that are just littered with weight stigma. Instead of saying words that literally don't make any sense. Uh, we can do that. We can play that game too. Simply just fucking do. So instead of leaving comments that are just littered with weight stigma. I invite you to keep scrolling and shut the fuck up. Crazy. is That's crazy, dude. Yeah, forget about actually proving me wrong. But forget about actually attacking the statement. Shut up. Don't talk to me about the problems that we have, even though I know that they're problems. That's, that, forget about that. That's ridiculous. Why would you say that? No, we're not talking about that. And that, my friends, is an example of thin privilege. What is Marissa Matthews even doing? Like, told you, told you, Marissa, you body slamming a grilled cheese. Okay, you think that's just good for you, nutritiously speaking? My body size makes my life easier, and I did nothing to deserve it. Interesting. Your body size makes your life easier, and you did nothing to deserve it. You didn't eat correctly. You didn't. You you never like looked at calories, or you never ate proper foods, and you don't work out, and you don't do any of that stuff. That's okay. All right. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's like somebody that has a car that goes in for regular maintenance, drives it perfectly, never has an accident and goes, but I don't deserve this. I don't deserve to have a good working car compared to this guy over here who's gotten like 50 accidents a year and his car is literally undrivable. That's ridiculous. That is crazy. Who, who listens to this woman? Can we please? Who listens to this woman, man? I would, I would love to have a conversation with these people, man. I really would. So I've been seeing a lot of videos of girls who have had gastric bypass surgery, gastric sleeve, lost a bunch of weight, and they'll come on this internet talking about people treat me so differently now that I've lost a hundred pounds. People just care about your looks and you being thin and... Most of the time, if we're talking about people that are in positions to be employment or dating or even everyday life, people are a little bit more receptive to people that are more attractive. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Pretty girls get hit on all the time. Um, a more attractive guys probably get more matches on dating apps and things such and so forth. It's okay. It's okay to acknowledge this as truth. Not all of us are going to be physically inclined in the direction that we want to be in, but that's all right. You know, it's, it's always better to at least know how the game is played and then operate based off of that. You can always make yourself more attractive, by the way. There are plenty of things that you can do. And when it comes to being fatter, losing weight, you know, it's not, I don't know why these people look at people that have better reception when they lose weight and they go, I, I, I just, I can't believe that when I lost weight, I was getting, I'm getting so many more uh, attention, so much more attention to me. Like I'm getting more job opportunities. People think I'm more attractive. Dudes are approaching me more, all this stuff. And then you think, and then you go, that's crazy. I can't believe they're getting all this good publicity and all this other stuff. And then you never think about losing weight. Like how many times have I seen a video of somebody saying that? And then these people just go, but I'm not losing weight. And that's fine if you don't want to lose weight. But just like, why are you complaining? So what? Yeah, so My what? So what? You're get So you're getting more attention. You're getting more reception for people. Tre people are treating you better. Your health has improved. Oh my, so what? That's whatever, whatever. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like, what are we even talking about right now? Why does that even matter? Yeah, why does that matter?
looks and you being thin and she sounds like she needs to blow her nose doesn't she like it says she sounds so congested like am i wrong on that i want to hear her talk people just care about your looks and you being thin and so what my thing is if you want to lose weight for yourself and that makes you feel better do it but to get on this internet talk about oh yeah my people see my glow up now people see me now and um i'm more valued and more seen by people you know what at the end of the day it don't matter your size people are gonna see you how they see you that doesn't even make sense that doesn't make sense and also the claim of like the fact, the audacity that you would get online and say this stuff to make fat people feel bad. I, I don't understand why this is always a claim because these people are literally also posting videos in the opposite direction. And many people can also determine those videos to be offensive just as much as these people determine those videos to be offensive. So in the very idea of your statement, which is that it's offensive to post things otherwise, you're literally doing the same exact thing. You're just doing it in the other direction. So you can't even make a, you can't, I really despise it when people say this. Like you will never hear me say that. I thoroughly enjoy when people put out content. It's awesome, it's great, please express yourself. But to sit there and shit on other people that are doing the exact same thing you're doing, but just in a different way, is cringe is it doesn't make sense your your entire thought process here is flawed beyond belief and the fact that you don't see that is concerning how can you not connect the dots on that at the end of the day it don't matter your size oh yeah and then also people see you how they see you fucking duh uh i didn't know that did you think that i didn't know that there's a reason why people are changing their physical appearance weight loss is literally physical yeah, you know that? I mean, sure, you might have some like benefits, mentally speaking, your hormones might improve, but majority of the weight loss is going to be for physical improvement. And I wonder how people see you physically. Okay. People are gonna see you how they see you. I have plenty of skinny friends. I don't care about the anecdotal evidence as well. Like if you're gonna point out something that's like, oh, my skinny friends actually don't get any attention, but even though they're thin, so if you lose weight, that doesn't mean anything inherently. What are you, dumb? What are you, dumb? That doesn't mean anything, I don't care. That your friends are thin and they don't have attention. And supermodel friends, gorgeous, size zero. You know what I found out recently? You know what I found out recently is that models don't make a lot of money. I found that out recently because there's so many models nowadays and the term model is so lightly used. So if you ever see a model and they go, I'm a model, they could be making like $5 a shoot, realistically. And I'm not even playing with you. So I'm just I'm just pointing that out. This person's a model. Size two friends. And they, t they say the same things. They say the exact same things about how, oh, if they had bigger boobs or more hips or a booty like Kardashian, they would get more uh, attention. They probably would, but it's a, it's a bottomless quest. Like if your end goal is to be the prettiest, prettiest, most beautiful, amazing, gorgeous, handsome person on the planet, you're never going to achieve it because your life's quest is consistent. Consistency um, is contingent on the fact that you're going to be the most beautiful you possibly can, which is never going to happen because that's, that's not even how it works. You could be the beautiful, you could be a very beautiful person in and of yourself. You can always like improve of, of course, but to have these unrealistic standards and comparing yourself to other people, it's meaningless because most of these people are literally not even working in the realm of reality. Most of these people are, if you're, if your ideal beauty standard is like Kim Kardashian or somebody that takes uh, exogenous hormones in order to improve their physical shape, you're never going to achieve that one because those people are doing things outside. They're doing it with the, with the, in the realm of medical intervention, which is fine if that's what they want to do. And then two, you're not them, which is fine. You can be yourself. I believe in you. If you want to be more beautiful, I know you can. If you want to be more handsome, you can. You can go to the gym. You can improve your health. You can literally be more responsible. There are plenty of things that do make you more attractive. And a lot of them don't even have to be physicality oriented. I mean, a lot of them could be, but a lot of them could just be, I don't want to do this, but I know I should, so I'm going to. So you're going to do it. And that could be something as simple as, I haven't drank enough water today. So what are you going to do? You're going to drink more water. Or it could be something like, well, my parents need me to take them somewhere. I don't want to do it. And you're going to do it anyway. You understand like these things add up and they make you the person that you are and they don't inherently have to be unrealistic standards that you set upon yourself by looking at other people who are like deities. You understand like you're not going to do it. It's okay. You don't have to be. More hits And then also or... these, um, this doesn't prove a point by the way. This doesn't prove a point. Like you have a friend or you have a couple friends that are thinner and they want to get bigger boobs or butts. So what does that have to do with losing weight, make you attractive more?
booty like Kardashian, they would get more uh, attention and people would. So see is this like a case to not do anything at all? Like, oh, because I if so, you're saying that if you lose weight, that doesn't mean inherently that you will see yourself as more attractive in the same way that if you are a lower body fat percentage because you have friends that want bigger boobs or butts you're you're drawing that correlation for what reason are you saying that it's irrelevant to lose weight because ultimately there's no there's no end goal that you'll always be chasing this ultimate goal of trying to be healthier and then never actually being healthy so you should just never do anything what are you talking about that's like somebody making like 10k a year and then they go, but I'll never make more than, I'll never make all the money. So I just won't make any money. I'll just quit my job and just, I don't know, live on the fucking streets. That's terrible. That's terrible advice. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. Is it? Okay, well. Even more. I have friends who are talking about, oh, I'm so thin and everybody, they don't see me. I'm just a stick and I'm invisible because I'm so thin. Like, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to your self-esteem. Yeah, good fucking luck with that shit. Good luck. I do think that confidence and self-esteem are very valuable things to improve and you can do that whilst losing weight 100 but to sit there and say that it's the number one metric when it comes to attraction is dumb because most people are not judging somebody based off of self-esteem or confidence most people are judging them based off of how they look looks get you in the door the other stuff is secondary most of the time and they'll stay based on those things but most people look upon somebody and go damn she banging damn that guy's handsome most of the time that's what people are going off of and that's okay we're human beings like i'm not here to i'm not here to like look at you and go you're disgusting for judging somebody outwardly nah dude i that's that's fine there's a reason why, like, I don't know, so many black guys like Hellcats. And, you know, people think that Ferraris look good. They do. It's okay. And the same way that you might think Kim Kardashian looks good. Or you think uh, Chris Hemsworth looks amazing. Or, uh, you know, Henry Cavill looks, you know, like a god on, on earth. That's okay. That's fine. That's that's. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to achieve something like that in the sense of, like, you want to be more attractive. That's okay. I don't know what's all. What is. Okay, well. And your confidence level and not about your weight or how you look at the end of the day there are people you are somebody's dream body it's type. it's never a good idea oh i hate this i hate this i hate this way of thinking you're somebody's dream body is playing the lottery because what you're ultimately saying is that even though you're getting no results even though you're fat and you're unattractive and you're not brushing your teeth or like, oh, that's really what I'm hearing right now. You're not doing anything to actually improve yourself physically, right? It doesn't matter because somewhere, somewhere, someone likes you for you, which probably is true. I'm sure somewhere, somewhere, somebody's going to like you for something. Sure. I'm not doubting that. But that's one in like eight billion. And I don't know why the fuck anybody would ever run the gamble on having somebody want them only one person out of 8 billion what you should actually be doing is increasing your attractiveness as much as you possibly can so the funnel which is like basically a straw because you're only allowing one, <laughs> a, a person that may or may not exist to funnel into that and find you who may not even like you because i mean even though they this is your ideal body everything behind it may not even be something that they want right you understand like the personality behind it. He may not even like that or she may not even like that. So what you should do actually is make yourself attractive. Generally speaking, this could be physically and mentally, of course, open up, open up the funnel and let people in. And when you, when they hit that final funnel line, you decide who you let in. You understand that is a much better outcome compared to just letting one person in. This is the worst way of trying to get a date or anything like that type as you are whether you lost weight or not who you are now what you look like now somebody thinks you're hot sure. like and if you are going to seek out that validation people people will um let you down every time like getting validation from people it may make you feel happy for about five minutes until you find something else that you feel like is wrong with you and if you fix that too sure i'm looking at the way that she's talking i understand what she's saying right <laughs> I'm too generous with these people, man. I get it. Like, you shouldn't be relying on other people in order to make you feel better about yourself. You should ultimately get that feeling from yourself and the, the progress and the growth within yourself. But you're literally telling people not to grow. Like, that's literally what you're saying. You're saying that there's no point to losing weight because you have people that are that have lost weight and that are thin and they are also going through the same problems. Therefore, you're good the way that you are. So, 
if your conclusion is, <laughs> if your conclusion is, it's it's crazy that I can literally articulate these 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 thought processes better than these people can. If your conclusion is, somebody will like you regardless of who you are, and then you're also telling me that there's nothing you can do to improve yourself because ultimately there is just like it's meaningless because people are gonna. Like it, you do realize that none of that makes sense, right? How can you tell people not to improve because somebody likes them the way that they are, but then also tell them to improve? Okay, well, all right, dude, whatever you fucking say. Minutes until you find something else that you feel like is wrong with you. And if you fix that too, they might like you more. But I that you're literally telling them to find inward growth, but you're telling them not to grow because there's no point because if they grow, then they're, they're also gonna feel the same problems that they did if they didn't grow. So there's no point. This this entire video is literally meaningless. This video is like an Ouroboros of you making a point, and when that point is made, you just say, fuck that point. Okay. I have a friend of mine who literally is gorgeous, beautiful. She gets surgeries every three months to fix something. I'm like, girl, aren't you running out of things to fix? Because every three months I see you, you got something else done. And this girl is like 25. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, we live in this culture in this time where people feel like everything needs to be fixed with surgery or everything just needs to be fixed so that you're validated by the masses. And let me tell you right now, that will never make you happy. Getting validation from random people to give you some sense of self-worth will disappoint you every time because people are fickle. Their feelings about you change and you may be desired valued and hot today to them until they find something else that's better than you so that's true but it ultimately doesn't matter like it's a good statement like find find validation within yourself you should be the one ultimately that grows and compares yourself to yourself day by day and don't rely on what other people think about you with the exception of perhaps maybe the people that are around you that you care about the most. Husband, wives, family members, things such and so forth, right? You could probably look at those people and have those people tell you if you're beautiful, then you probably – they probably mean it because they're people ultimately that care about you most, right? But you're also telling people that to go through the quest of fixing things – that it doesn't matter ultimately because you're still going to feel the same way that you feel if you didn't fix these problems to begin with that you don't even consider to be problems then there's no point of growing so it doesn't make sense like i just i don't i'm, I'm failing to understand maybe i'm can somebody down below let me know maybe i'm missing something so the end of the day you need to count on yourself okay. to know that god made you perfect it's like oh it depends on what you mean by perfect, okay? Like, a lot of people die alone. A lot of people die with depression. A lot of people go through their days and they have tons and tons and tons of problems. Did God make them perfect or are they just lacking the ability to do something to improve their lives, right? And I, I understand that some people may not have a choice in that, right? I know some people with like debilitating conditions, I can't do anything about it, I understand, right? But if you have the ability to do something about you, about, about the problems that you're having, but you deduce that you're perfect because you're perfect, then you'll never change or do anything about the problems because you think that you're perfect. Why would you fix something that isn't broke? Okay, all right, dude. Uh, but yeah, sure, you're perfect. Again, she's just reinforcing that. Okay, all right, all right, dude. I, all right, man. It, none of this made sense. None of this. None of this. Absolutely none of this. The only thing that did make sense is the bonnet. I'll give her that. The bonnet, nice bonnet, taking care of the hair. I'll give you that. You're beautiful just the way you are, and no one's should no one's opinion should change how you feel about yourself. So, like the statement of "you're beautiful exactly the way you are," it's always nice to hear, but it's it's meaningless. It's like a it's it's an iceberg, right? It's an iceberg, and it's just the nice top layer, but the bottom layer is deep. Because if you tell somebody, "Ha, oh man, I'm about to I'm about to literally black pill you for a second. If you tell somebody they're perfect exactly the way they are, and they don't need to change in order to be more beautiful or anything like that, and this person is literally telling you that they have problems and they can't like they can't find boyfriends or girlfriends, and they're like perpetually depressed, and there's things such as so forth. You know that's hurting them more, right? You know that's actually worse than just telling them that they do have an issue and how to tell them to fix that issue, or at least talking about the problem to begin with. You do understand that, right? Like if you told if somebody came to you. And they said, listen, I'm having this problem. I can't, I've, I've been, 
I can't find girlfriends. I, I just, I, I go out of my way and I try to make, I, you know, I try to do as much as I can to like appease these women and find meaningful relationships. I'm 28. I'm a virgin. Um, I can't find a girlfriend or whatever the fuck. Right. And then you go, it's okay. You're perfect. Exactly the way you are. You don't need to change. That person's going to look at you and go, thanks for the not fucking help. I'm going to go up to my fucking basement with a gun. That's what they're going to fucking do because that's terrible information. It's not helping somebody. You understand? It's like these people that sit there and go, oh, I'm in, I'm in a life, like a life altering place right now. I'm, I'm constantly in debt. I have like $40,000 in credit card payments. My house is literally about to be foreclosed. My wife is pregnant. I have no money to my fucking name. I just got fired. What am I going to do? And you go, well, listen, um, listen, dude, at least you're, at least you're not. Uh, at least you weren't alive 2000 years ago where people like died at the age of 22 from diarrhea and you know you're living a good life now that's not helping that person you're not doing fucking anything to alleviate that person's problem or at least help them in any fucking way any significant way in the same way that somebody could go oh we need to seek out systemic issues we need to like advocate for i don't know a socialized income so everybody can get paid something and we need to like abolish student loan debt or we need to do this and this and this like these big systemic issues that sure might improve society but it's not going to help that guy he needs he needs he needs some help now he needs somebody who can give him advice now he like what is alleviating student loan debt in 20 years going to do for this guy right now when he's literally his life is falling apart right now you understand so sometimes i hear these people say this and they think and i think the information that you're giving is really good surface level, but the reality of what you're saying is so damaging that it's, it's just useless. It's literally just fucking useless. It's never going to help anybody. Anyway. I have another... I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that black pill. Friend, a guy friend. I, he has beautiful teeth to me. Like, I have, he has such beautiful teeth. Okay. Oh. I'm going to let you know right now, dude. If you're the... <laughs> I'm going to let you know right now. Look, if you look at a guy and you go... You have beautiful teeth. That's fucked. Because like, what do you, what you're actually saying is like, damn, you are ugly, but your teeth. That's what I'm hearing from that. That is a crazy ass thing to say. My friend, I, he has beautiful teeth to me. Like I have seen To me, also to the, to the, <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Like, it's also like, I'm reading it a little bit too far, but to sit there and say like, you have beautiful teeth to me. Okay. So what are you saying about everybody else? You think <laughs> this guy must be busted. God damn. I have another friend, a guy friend. I, he has beautiful teeth to me. Like I have, he has such beautiful teeth. A little bit of like different angle, different shape. Oh, yeah, like okay. one's like his vampire teeth is coming out. It's a little crooked. Okay. But it's so beautiful to me. Like I was to like, you, wow, yeah. you have character. Like your teeth are gorgeous. You know, he tells me he's afraid to smile because uh, he's so ashamed of yeah, that. You just fucking told me that this guy should have had braces. Like he has, he has uh, okay. Like, I, this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. I knew it, dude. I knew. I didn't watch this video. I have not watched this video. I knew it, bro. The moment she said, he has such beautiful teeth to me, I knew it. He must be busted, too, given the fact that the only thing that she can identify, and to be honest, the, the thing that she thinks is the most attractive thing on him is not even something that's objectively attractive, but only something that she likes herself, which is crazy. Whoo, man, this guy, bro, I'm going to keep it a buck. She just completely obliterated this guy inadvertently. That is, cr I would be so monstrously offended if I watched this video as that guy. I'm like, yo, what the fuck, dude? You couldn't give me anything? You couldn't give me shit? Damn, dude, you literally just started going in on this guy for no reason, dude. Damn. <laughs> he has one crooked teeth right here. And I was looking at him so crazy. I'm like, what? Because you don't understand this. Is Man, dude, come on, dude. This person... I I get it. I do. I understand. But it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Your opinion on like you, your one opinion is not going to change how the majority of people feel about this particular aspect. Most people think being fat unattractive in the same way that most people are going to look at your crooked friend tooth as also unattractive. That's, that's just what it is. You understand. And I understand like you think that because you, you think that these things are attractive, that that's, you know, somebody somewhere is going to think something's attractive about you. So what? So what? What does that mean to this guy who actually has problems that literally has a problem with smiling and he thinks it's an issue? One person telling them that his teeth looks good compared to thousands of people that tell them that his teeth are bad. What is that going to do for him? Fucking nothing. Fucking nothing. Like, 
I think it's beautiful, but yeah. like it really just has to come within. Like I don't. That's not even what you're saying, too. You. Oh my God! You didn't even make that claim. You literally. Okay, so you told me that you should find beauty within yourself, and then the example that you gave was your busted friend with crooked teeth. Okay, like you probably look like sloth from the Goonies, and you told me that this guy, you thought his teeth look attractive, and you were telling him that you thought his teeth look attractive, which was irrelevant, given the fact that his teeth are busted, and he has the, everybody tell him that it was busted, but you told him that it was looking good, and then when you told him that he looked good, you should, then you told him that he needs to find beauty within? What are you talking about? Why would you even give the example of you saying that you like his teeth if you were just going to tell him ultimately that he needs to find beauty within? What does that even mean? Okay. All right, dude. Whatever, bro. This woman makes no fucking sense. I, I don't even know why I'm even... Why am I giving this woman so much grace, dude? I, I don't know. I don't know. Care if you're 500 pounds, 100 pounds. Like, it doesn't matter. You okay. What well, you dude? Come on, dude. Come on. I'm sorry I keep interrupting. This woman is on some different shit. You have to love yourself. It has to come from within. That's my TED Talk today. Happy Easter. Bye. None of the things. Oh, my God, dude. The only thing that's good about this video is that bonnet. That bonnet is great. I'll give you that one. I hope it's silk. Nothing she said made sense. Everything that she said, she contradicted herself. And even the last one, that damn, I feel bad for that friend. That friend must be watching this video crying. I would cry, too. I'm kind of I'm kind of tearing up for that guy. It is a truth universally acknowledged that fat women in educational theater are often cast as mother. Educational theater? Man, that is a niche thing. An educational theater? I want to talk about why that is. Most women in traditional theater fall into one of three archetypes. The virgin, the whore, and the mother. The virgin is the ingenue. She is designed to be attractive to men, but not have any sexual agency. The whore is the soubrette, the sexy woman who's usually a supporting character and is often kind of made a joke out of because she's so confident in her sexuality. And the mom is the mom. True. Because she's the only one desexualized, this is where the fat girls get put. Now all three of these tropes are defined by how they are serving the men in the story. The ingenue provides romance, the whore provides sex, and the mother provides nurturing. I get what they're saying, but it's also kind of, it's really weird when these people look at these traditional ways at which we write movies nowadays and i understand that a lot of movies were written in this particular type of way to appease men or you know whatever and that could do with a lot of different things like you know society was different at one point so when we did make media maybe it was centered towards men or the idealistic version of what women should look like and things such and so forth this stuff has changed like i would say probably in the last 50 years it's gotten drastically different are the media that in which we consume nowadays is incredibly diverse compared to what it used to be and this has a lot to do with social media has a lot to do with internet in general so when i see people talking about these particular claims i'm not saying that they're not they do have some back they do have they do have the, the the ability to talk about it i agree but a lot of this stuff that particularly this person talks about it seems like they're caught in like 2004 or maybe even earlier because a lot of this stuff it doesn't really make sense anymore and don't get me wrong sure movies are still made nowadays with this particular aspect of storytelling right i do i understand and that's not a good thing or a bad thing it just depends on how they do it but the point i'm making here is like the way that this person is looking at it is just it to me it just comes off very disingenuous given that the scenarios that we're in nowadays it'd be like me going like we need systemic change we need systemic change because women can't vote in 2024 and then they go wait no women can vote in 2024 and you go oh yeah i know but i was talking about like the early 1900s like i was talking about that like yeah i meant 19 Nin 1924 that's what i actually meant yeah that's like it's like uh, i get it but like simultaneously like the point still stands like we should have done something earlier sure and we could probably do something more stuff now but like dude what are you fucking why are you bringing this up now so if you're fat in theater and don't have traditional and then also theater is very 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 um uh it, it's a very weird thing to also point out it's like it's very uh general and also super specific romantic or sexual appeal the only way that you can be of use is nurturing and that's why somehow it is because women have a very particular okay <laughs> it just it really just depends on why you're looking at these particular roles right throughout all of history women were not seen as people that like the warmongers or like big heroes of stories and things such and so forth and you could attribute that to um sexism right you could attribute that to sexism but i don't like to do that because given the time frame of like history in general right 
men needed to do what they needed to do because that's just what it was. For all of time, it was like warring and you needed to like, you know, you needed food right now on the table. And then maybe that meant that you had to be a king or maybe you had to be like some kind of guy that was like going off to war or that maybe that meant to, you know, um, working in the fields or something like that. Right. And things have changed in the last, I would say, 20 to 30, maybe even 60 years, to be honest. And this was a good change. Right. Which is one of the reasons why we're seeing women um, dominating uh, particular fields or graduating from college at a much higher rate compared to men. And the reason for that is because in an era where we no longer need men to dominate fields, women are dominating these fields, right? And we might be heading into a new era of like women domination, which is great. You know, I think that more women or more people in general um, should be doing roles. Like when you're in a less physical dominated, uh, uh, less physically dominated uh, economy, what tends to happen is that the less physical gender will be the one that is the one outperforming, right? You understand? So like if men are the guys that are really physical and can do, I'm not saying men can't do the less physical jobs, of course, but usually for all of time, that's what men had to do because that's just what it was. All right. And that's the reason why women were seen as nurturing and they were the ones that cared because that's all they could do. Like that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? That's all they had. <laughs> so I think Maybe I just have a very weird way of thinking about it, but that's kind of like the way that I've always thought about it. Like I've never, um, I always like to give grace to these people and I see where they're coming from. I do. But, uh, I think that if more people thought the way that I did about that, it, you would know why in particular movies, plays, TV shows that women are the ones traditionally seen as the ones that are nurturing and things like that because of all of time, like 99% of time, that's what women had to do. And I'm not saying that women are inherently like that. I'm just saying that's all they had. Like they didn't have options for like a very long period of time. And don't get me wrong. Men didn't have options either. I'm not sitting here saying that men, women need to be looked at in a particular way. Men also didn't have options. Like men had to do these particular things. Otherwise they would just fucking die. It was a tough life for like everybody up until I would say 150 years ago, maybe even a little bit uh, after that. Believable for a 12 year old fat girl to play a 60 year old woman, but not to play a romantic lead. I don't know who needs to hear this, but looking better as in closer to the beauty standard does not mean you are better as a person does not mean your lifestyle is better does not mean you are happier does not mean your life has improved that's true that is true if you lose weight that doesn't inherently mean that you're going to be a better person overall i agree with that but like i would love to see where this is going to go is this uh is this another so your life is not necessarily going to improve so why even try type of moment or and i wish people could get this through their heads but i feel like there's a huge conflation with like the way that you look outside being indicative of like your mental health i agree there are plenty of people that you look at that are beautiful amazing spectacular people that can perform in very good situations but deep down inside Everybody's going through stuff, right? Everybody, every single person has some shit going on. This is one of the reasons why I tell people so often that when you look upon people that are on social media and you see that they're living such great lives because social media is probably one of the ways that most people are comparing and contrasting to themselves nowadays, right? Maybe back 40 years ago, it was like movies and TV shows, but nowadays it is social media. So when I see young people look, young people are the ones predominantly being affected by this because as you get older and older, you realize you have experience, you have real world experience and you, you, you can deduce that these people are not realistic, right? So when you're younger, this shit really fucks you up. But people look upon these people and they go, why are these people living such great lives? And I'm, I'm living this terrible life. And I just, God, why is this? Okay? I can never, these people are living suck dick lives too. Okay. Even though they have millions of dollars or whatever it may be, it doesn't matter ultimately because these people are probably going through some crazy fucking shit, just like you're going through some crazy shit. You should always be looking at it and approaching that in that scenario. Not everybody's, nobody's perfect. Everybody's going through some crazy shit. And just because they're putting on this facade or this grand illusion to portray themselves as these great deities upon earth in order to, to strive and look upon, that's not the case. These people are flawed. They're probably sucking toes in the background that, you know, the girl that you think looks so hot probably has athlete's foot and eczema on her vagina. You know, it's just what it is. All right. It's okay as well. Like you, the point I'm making is like, you shouldn't be looking upon these people as deities, but you should also be looking at it as like a. I know this person, even though they're not putting, even though they're not showing it, they're going through some shit. You shouldn't be looking at people like that. So, uh, with the exception of me, of course, obviously I'm a beautiful specimen of human being, you know, pray to me. No, I'm fucking with you. Your life, how you're doing in general. And that is just not the case. And I know for myself and a lot of other people. Uh, this is something that I feel like you, you learn over time. Like I remember when I was 
18 to I believe maybe 18 to 23, 24, I I had to delete social media past those ages because like I was it was a consuming my life that I was coming every time I went on Instagram, anytime I went on Snapchat, anytime I went on any social medias, I would just feel consistently depressed at the knowledge that I wasn't doing shit. I would see people going to like stadiums and I would see people like having great times on boats and going to different countries and I'm just sitting here like what the fuck am I doing? You know, like I've never left the country. I've never done this. I've never done that. I've never even been to a game. Like, what am I doing? Am I fucked up? I'm not, I'm fucking up in life. Right. And that's okay. Where you are and where they are. You don't know if they're in a worse position than you. A lot of people that you see doing things like that, they're probably taking out debt. They're probably doing something that you probably wouldn't do. And just because you're not doing what they wanted, just because you're not doing what they're doing, doesn't mean you're less of a human being. You're still good, dude. You just you just got your shit oriented in a different way. Don't look at other people and think that because they're doing something more than you, that doesn't necessarily mean they're doing something more than you. You could be on the right path. You're good, okay? I'm not saying that you shouldn't improve. I'm just saying you shouldn't strive to do what other people are doing because they're doing it. You understand? Find your own passions and then work based off of those things don't worry about what other, what, else, what what all these other people are doing to find their joy right you understand work on yourself compare yourself day to day don't worry about what that instagram person is doing don't worry about what that social media person is doing you're good you're good just keep improving yourself i believe in you that the time when we looked technically best was a time when we were the least healthy we were the least happy i struggle to realize that this per if this person was the least healthy at the weight whatever weight that they were at their lightest that is very very not good because i don't know what they did i i do remember watching a video that this person said i think tracy yeah tracy said that she was on a major calorie deficit she wasn't eating for days at a time and she was cutting out like major drastic foods of of course if you're doing that you're gonna have some major health complications given the fact that you're doing things in the improper way i always advocate for people to slow and steady lose weight through deficits but go off queen we were the least happy and we were the most insufferable as people and now I look the technically worst I ever have in my adult life, and I'm doing just as well, if not better, as I was when I looked better. So is that a case not to lose weight? Like, I understand what you're saying, but is that a case to not lose weight or better yourself because you're doing better now at a higher body fat percentage? I, I fail to understand the point. And the scary thing about measuring ourselves in this way is it means you can't get wiser as you age. That's bullshit. What? How? how? Okay, I'm going to hear her out, but this that sounds like some crazy information. Because if everything is about how you look and how good you look. No, it's not everything. It's not everything. You should be also growing mentally as you age. But being in a better physically adept body is not going to prohibit you in significant ways compared to what it would be if you were fat. You understand? I don't know why this person has to sit there and go, you're not going to grow mentally if you're, if you're fucking thinner. What are you talking about? Nobody's looking... Nobody's looking at it solely as the only way to improve. Can't get wiser as you age, because if everything is about how you look and how good you look, then at some point you're going to start looking worse. You just are because our beauty standard is young. Yeah, this is a very crazy way of also looking at it because the, the, the idea that eventually you will look ugly because you'll get older is fine to say, but that shouldn't be a case to never do anything because you will ultimately be old like that is a crazy ass thing to say so you should just never strive for any type of like betterment because ultimately you'll just die like i get i get what you're saying but it's a <laughs> it's a very pessimistic take like so you just get forget about improvement because ultimately you're just gonna die anyway what the fuck jesus man uh don't believe that shit you're you can improve you can no matter what age you are you can be physically looking better physically feeling better don't believe this bullshit. This is a crazy statement. <laughs> Jeez, man. Jesus, Tracy. So when you age and you start looking bad, what is that going to mean about you? It as just a person? depends on what you mean by looking bad. Like the natural process of aging, in my opinion, is a beautiful thing, right? It's a beautiful thing in the sense of like everybody's going to be going through this. Some more than others. Like, you know, some people look like clint eastwood at the age of 30 right but that's not going to affect everybody and depending on how you age and you know how you feel about that it's okay like everybody's going through it so you shouldn't look down upon that process as like an ugly phase i would just go as far as to say as like a i don't know a maturing stage right i wouldn't say you're fucking ugly because you you age it's just you're different now you know what i'm talking about like at different time frames in your life 
things are going to happen more and things are going to happen less, right? So like when, you know, maybe when you're 20, you're going to be exploring things. You're going to be maybe dating a bunch of people. You can buy your first car. Maybe you're going to go to school. Maybe you're going to get your first job, whatever. 30 years old, maybe you're looking into getting kids, a house, things such and so forth. 40 years old, maybe the more of the same stuff, but a little bit more matured versions of that. And then as you progress older and older and older, yeah, things are going to change. Maybe these are like the, the glory years of your life and things like that. Like you should, it's just different for different people. Like you understand, like, I feel like once you pass a certain age, beauty standard is not really something you prioritize anymore because you feel differently. You understand? I don't know, man. It's just weird. And this kind of enables us to treat older people as irrelevant, to dismiss people who aren't conventionally attractive, That's... and to assume things about people just based on the way that they look, which is a really easy, like, slip and slide into judgment, prejudice, bigotry. I, I mean, I understand what they're saying, but... If you're old, you can look better. If you're old, you can feel better. You can lose weight. You can gain weight. You can become healthier. You can lift weights. Like these things are super important, right? I'm not saying old people aren't attractive either. There are plenty of people that I think look way better when they're older than I did when they were younger, mostly men. But there are plenty of women too um, that look way better when they're older, right? So I see what they're saying in the sense of like the beauty standard does depict younger people as more attractive. But – that shouldn't be a case for you to not do anything because that is a terrible way of looking at life. It's like the scenario that I use, like, why should I make more money when ultimately I'll never make the most money? You could still make more money and improve your life. So be careful with that, you guys, because I will tell you firsthand that looking better does not mean being better. And I bet some of you are going to say, oh, but like better is however you look when you're happier. But a lot of people out there disagree with you. Let me tell you. Sure, 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 sure. We'll leave it on that. All right. Like, you know, focus on yourself, work on yourself, be better compared to yourself and so on and so forth. But it doesn't matter. You know, like forget about that. You know what does matter though? You at the end of the day, you are an amazing, beautiful specimen of human being. And I care about you deeply. And I love that you spent this entire video watching this video with me. I don't know how you made it, but you made it. So thank you for being here. If uh, you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you can do that stuff for me, I'd appreciate you tremendously. Uh, if you want to become a member of my channel, you could totally do that. If you don't want to, that's fine. I want to thank anybody that is a member. Thank you, by the way. Um, thank you for taking the commitment to be with me for the rest of your life. That's right, because we're going to be together forever because you made that commitment. It's not my fault. Your fault. Um... If you, I also want to thank everybody that's a subscriber. Thank you for also subscribing. I appreciate that. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in comb because I found this the other day and uh, I use it. I use it. I brush my hair and stuff like that. So write down comb down below and then I'll know how much of a beautiful specimen of human being that you are. I also want to acknowledge your presence today and how special and how beautiful you are as an individual because I feel like people should be acknowledged for what they what they do and how they act and how they you know exist in society and things such and so forth you're beautiful you're amazing i love that the consistency of you as a person your ability to take responsibility your ability to move forward when things happen to you you have the ability to bounce back you can not look at the outward uh, appearance of yourself in a very dr drastic way but look at how you can improve yourself inwardly too as well so I really appreciate that about you, and I appreciate your patience as well for being here for as long as you have. You're an amazing person. You smell awesome. Your armpits are not lubricated today because you were responsible enough to put on deodorant. And if you didn't put on deodorant because you're one of those people that thinks that um, it's against nature, that's cool too. Sometimes I don't wear deodorant. Guess what? I'm not even wearing deodorant right now. What you going to do about it, huh? Lubricated. Lubricated. But anyway, guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of your, oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, if you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and second channel. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace!